Hi, welcome back to our continuation of uh, the Newton Raphson for simultaneous equations. So, our idea is to generalize the Newton Raphson scheme, which is for a one dimensional equation, to a Newton Raphson scheme for this set of simultaneous equations. So, our first step is to rewrite it with uh, moving all the terms to the right hand side. That is, I want to move all of them to the left hand side so that the right hand side becomes 0. So, you can see that here 1 prime and 2 prime. The next thing is to calculate the Jacobian, which is take f1 and f2 and find all its partial derivatives. This is df1 dx, this is df, df1 dy, this is df2 dx, and this is df2 dy. And our final scheme looks like this xn plus 1 is xn minus delta t times j inverse times f, where we have replaced the two variables x and y with a column vector x, x, y, the function f with f1, f2, and this Jacobian is here j inverse. So, in MATLAB, this will look like x equals x ply minus, and we are going to put delta t equal to 1, it is going to look like j slash f. So, this j inverse f becomes j slash f. Okay. So, we are going to, I am now going to show you this MATLAB program for doing that so that you can see how this whole thing works. I am going to try and see if I can put both of them next to each other so that you can see exactly what is going on. So, let us move it up here a little bit. There you go. And I will shrink this sideways a little bit. There. So, here is MATLAB all set and ready to, ready to go. Our first step is to define uh, this f, f and j. f is this function, f1, f2. So, I am going to put f equals, I am going to use what is called an anonymous function at, uh, at x. You always have to be careful with this because there could be lots of typos and things like that. So, I will probably make some mistakes and we will figure out whether how to correct it. So, I want a column vector of two variables. The first one is this function, the second one is that. Remember y. Uh, y is x2, x is x1, so it is x2 minus plus x1 whole square <coughs> minus x1 minus 0 0.75 semicolon. That will give me the next column x2 plus 5 times x1 uh, times x2 minus x1 squared. Okay, according to me, this should be ready. Okay, so let us test it. f of, let us say, 5 comma 2. So, notice that the input to this is a column vector, x, y. Okay, so let us see if that works. Whoops. So, I got some, yeah, I know what it is. f of, 5 semicolon 2. It is always a good idea to check your variables before you continue. So, there it gives me some rubbish and I you know the f of x equal to 0 is what I want. So, 5 comma 2 is not the answer. So, let us try. So, what we want to do next is put the Jacobian matrix j equal to at x. Square bracket. Now, we are going to enter the Jacobian matrix which is out here j equals 2x minus 1, 1, 5, 5i minus 2x and all that. So, it is 2 times x1 minus 1 comma 1 semicolon 5 times x2 minus 2 times x1 comma 1 plus 5 times x1. Let us say j 5 comma 2, sorry, 5 semicolon 2. There, I got j, I got f. Now I am ready. I am going to start with the trial value of x. This is always Newton Raphson requires you to start with some value. So I am going, I'm just going to put x equal to um, 1 comma 1, 1 semicolon 1. Let us see what happens. Okay. So this is my trial value. Let us see if this is really correct, f of x. Well, 
I am close in one variable but not in the other, so it's not so great. So let us make a better guess. X equal to x minus j of x divided by, sorry, slash f of x. This is my next guess. Okay, that's not so good. So now you can actually test it out. Yeah, it's we seem to be really in bad shape. Let us try again. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's try again. Now we are getting really better. Can you see that f of x got better? So let's try again. So notice that I take the old value 1.407 and 0.2241 and substitute again. I got 1.3728 and 0.2932. Let us see how good f of x is. 0 0.001, 0 0.0033. Okay, we are getting closer now. Let's try that again. And let's see what happened to f of x. Now you can see f of x is 10 to the minus 5. Let's try that input again. 10 to the minus 12. I mean, now we are really, really good. By the way, how come last time it gave me 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 12? By the way, what has happened is I got the answer correct to 4 decimal places. The next time I am going to get answer correct to 8 decimal places. But I am only displaying 4. So it is 0 0.131721 and the next thing is in the 8th decimal place. So we are actually getting remarkably improved solutions. But you can see, you know, we started out with not having any clue about the solution. I just tried x equal to 1, 1 and then we kind of drifted off, you know, then we got a better version, we got we got an even better version and then we got an even better version and then we got an even better, every time it's the same thing, x equal to x minus j over j slash f, that's all it is, okay. I hope you got the idea. I hope you can do this thing. The main thing here with Newton Raphson is you have to go on inverting. <coughs> you have to find j inverse, that j slash f. If it is two equations, two variables, no problem. If it is 10 simultaneous equations with 10 variables, we may run into some slight difficulties. Usually speaking, in many cases, especially in mechanics, uh, you know, in some aspects of mechanics, we will be solving thousand equations or even million equations for million variables. I mean, believe it or not, that's true. So what happens then is you really have to figure out how to solve this simultaneous linear equation properly. That is J inverse X, how to do that better. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And the idea for that comes from Gauss, originates from Gauss and it's called Gaussian elimination and ALU decomposition and all of that. And that's where we're headed next.